Hey, it's Staff Sergeant Nick Young coming to you from the trenches um, where you got to keep your spirits high and your head low. Today we're going to take a look at some of the weaponry from World War One. Hey, how you doing, sir? Good, how are you? Yeah, tell me uh, a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do here. My name is Duncan McQueen. I'm uh, retired from the New Jersey National Guard 32 years, Sergeant First Class. And I'm a volunteer at the museum, and we're here to talk about small arms from World War I. Starting out, we have some edged weapons known as trench knives. This is the uh, American model of 1917. Notice the knuckles for fighting. In 1918, they came up with this model. It gave birth to what we know as brass knuckles. Now, if you can imagine, it gives a, a more hospitable wound. This is a, a, one example of a German Luger called a P08 for 1908 when it was designed and manufactured. This is known as the artillery model only because it has a long barrel. Collectors know it as that. It was actually made for the German Navy. This is another German weapon. This is known as the Mauser pistol. My model of uh, 1902. And the novelty about this is you can remove the buttstock and that becomes the holster. Oh. Whoa! <laughs> Mind blow. Wow. So does that use a uh, magazine or? Uh... It loads with a stripper clip stripper. down through here. A lot of people out there will recognize this, the uh, Colt model 1911 for the year it was Adopted by the U.S. government, which we still use today. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of our armed forces are still using it. And this is what we had going into World War One. But the isolationist attitude in this country kept us from producing arms in building up for war. So we found ourselves in a war and didn't have enough guns to go around. So we couldn't possibly make enough 45 automatics overnight. So it happens that Colt and Smith and Wesson were turning out revolvers in 45 caliber Colt. With only a few minimum modifications, the Colt and Smith and Wesson revolvers could be modified to fire the government 45 caliber ammo. Wow. And that's what we have here. So this is a field expedient, you might say, to get handguns in the hands of the troops as quickly as possible. This particular model is a Smith & Wesson. The Colt design is a spitting image. The biggest difference is the front sight. So uh, they added the lanyard ring to the butt, which the original pistols didn't have. So again, these were popular as a secondary weapon in uh, World War I and again in World War II.